have an assignment to register your name in the realm of the spirit there are spirits you don't just bind and cast there are rules of engagement when it has to do with victory over captivity it's not power you need it's the mercy of god all healing all deliverances all restoration come from that department of his mercy remember the cassia womb remember the commandments laws and instruction remember the rod of Aaron, priesthood if you want to host the glory of god especially in this end time let me tell you sincerely do not ignore the rod of Aaron. there are mysteries that control speed there are mysteries that control restoration there are mysteries that control lifting there are mysteries that control being anointed there are mysteries that control exemption there are mysteries that control prosperity there are mysteries that control influence your assignment is to walk in partnership with the spirit of grace and find you can pray yourself from wood and become clay pray yourself from clay and become silver pray yourself from silver until you become gold when satan came to him he didn't say i think he didn't say i wish he said it is written an individual can be a career of that presence you want to become an ark you must submit yourself to law and instruction you can be a living breathing career of this ark you don't have to tell people i'm dangerous let the devil try you and what happened to the philistines one day i was in the place of prayer and i was caught up in the realm of the spirit and i began to hear the song of angels and this was the song that i heard like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it peaks, spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars if you want to host the glory of god especially in these end times let me tell you sincerely do not ignore the rod of aaron it's not just a rod it's a rod of priesthood you're not just going to stand and tell demons go away you will not just stand over cities and say i open the two lift gates no sir it will be at the instance of genuine priesthood he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray you have an assignment to register your name in the realm of the spirit so that demons will not just say jesus i know paul i know Add your name Joshua Selman I know because they are witnesses to your priesthood we're discussing the ark remember the wood of Achaia the cassia wood remember the commandments laws and instruction remember the rod of Aaron priesthood now the next is the pot or the omer that carried manna pelaski da branda katoshke debria shanima katabra sige debeleke debrasi the manna there talks about the ministry of the word jesus himself was speaking about this in matthew 4 he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word every word the manna that does not decay the manna that could not go through corruption and the only seed we know that is incorruptible is that which is by the word of god listen to me the word of god defines the jurisdiction of his commitment to the believer god cannot be committed to the believer outside of the scope that the word of god allows him he has chosen to exalt his word even above his name this is the difference between the faith life and superstition god is bound only by his word that means if you want to get god committed to your life it must be the the legal basis upon which you will place your demands must be scripture when satan came to him he didn't say i think he didn't say i wish he said it is written what gives us victory in this kingdom is what is written not what we want whatever you want you must find out whether it is written or not if what you want is not written it cannot happen what you want only happens when it is written please listen to me if you want to host the glory of god upon your life your church your business it must be a ministry that has respect and value for scripture It was written so that it cannot be changed. 
it is written. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus himself was teaching. And he said, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We reign in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we sustain. A mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know. There are mysteries that control speed. There are mysteries that control restoration. There are mysteries that control lifting. There are mysteries that control being anointed. There are mysteries that control exemption. There are mysteries that control prosperity. There are mysteries that control influence. Your assignment is to walk in partnership with the spirit of grace and find for everyone that seek it, find it. The seed for finding is to seek. If you do not seek, you cannot have the harvest of finding. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says, Through desire a man, having separated himself, that he seeketh and he intermeddleth with all wisdom. Please let us obtain grace from God to go back to scripture and settle down. Otherwise our life will look superstitious yet will keep failing. I believe the word of God why do I know the sick will be healed because it is written why do I know God will commit himself to your lifting tonight because it is written not because I am a man of God being a man of God is a secondary reason the primary reason why all things happen is because it is written John chapter 1 and verse 3 all things were made by him and without him, without him means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made. That means when you neglect the word of God, the possibility of creation and manifestation has left you. It has to be at the instance of the word. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past, through the prophet had in these last days spoken to us through his son which is the word whom he had appointed to be heir over all things and then when you read verse 3 he says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding how many things upholding my tomorrow upholding my tomorrow upholding my tomorrow through the word of his power up upholding my future my confidence is beyond the advantage or the disadvantage in a territory your confidence must be based on it is written it is written why will you succeed i have a great father you are joking woe unto him that puts his strength in a man even the word himself use it is written to defend himself the word of god didn't say my opinion the word submitted to it is written can i tell you this you must know how to defend your victory it is written why should i leave this family it is not we are members of a particular church that is wonderful there is a place for prophetic covering but i tell you the real reason why we excel in this kingdom is because it is written. remember the manner it was kept here as a memorial that there is no victory for you if it is not written anything that is not written cannot happen the anointing of the spirit does not work at random the anointing of the spirit follows what is written so if you are making claims in prayer there is a verification system in the realm of the spirit before the anointing begins to move on that wise the anointing does not just come because you want it to come the anointing verifies whether that desire is consistent with what is written preachers Let's stop preaching what we want and preach what is.
because what we want will not come to pass until it is written. Let's sit down. The Lord is turning you into an ark. Now you know what makes the ark more than the object. The participatory role that you have to play. Sitting down and waiting for God to do everything is a joke. It took man to build the ark. It will take you to make that place conducive for him. You want to become an ark, you must submit yourself to laws and instructions. And then you must submit yourself to the ministry of priesthood. You must learn to pray until you evolve into a vessel of honor. You can pray yourself from wood and become clay. Pray yourself from clay and become silver. Pray yourself from silver until you become gold. Hear me? When we pray, we truly evolve. Yes, sir. The version of you your future is looking for has not yet become. So your future is looking for a version of you that you have not become. Ah. The dream you saw about your greatness, that dream was designed to happen to another version of you, not this version. And your destiny keeps waiting. So it looks like you are not moving forward. And God is saying, no, I want to bless you. But there is a version of you that must carry that anointing the anointing you are looking for for nations cannot come on this fashion i'm seeing the spirit of prayer just coming on 11 people this is what i'm seeing please just help them 11 people now you understand that prayer is for your growth for your evolution hear me hear me you can pray an old realm out of your life into a new season you can use prayer to close seasons and open new ones. Can I be honest with you? If we truly want to become this ark, we must obtain grace from God to move past just the realm of meeting needs to the realm where you stand with God and you can grow to a point of stature where God can trust you with the grace for nations not just things we're not talking about having one or two things that God can carry the destiny of a territory and say take if they are saved it's your fault if they are not saved it's your fault look at the rewards of those who were faithful with the talents that were given to them authority over nations Believers, let's return to the genuine ministry of priesthood. More than just give me things. I'm not saying those things are wrong. You can listen to my message, teach us to pray. I taught there about the mysteries, the dimensions of prayer. There is a dimension of prayer that is for supplication and petitions. But primarily, prayer is a tool for fellowship. And in that fellowship, there is evolution. You know you have met him because you changed. The protocol of encounter is that when you meet him, you are changed. And we all with unveiled face. It says beholding the glory. It's not the glory that changes. It's you that changes. Hear me. When the animals looked at what Jacob put, they were the ones who were changed into what they were seeing. then the manna which is the word of God ignorance is dangerous in this end time 
you must know what is written please sit down the bible basically contains three things am i wasting your time every time you open up scripture the bible contains three things that you must never forget number one the bible contains promises the promises of god represent the scope of his commitment to you there are promises that he has made excellent things he has spoken about his zion you must know the promises of god as revealed from scripture what has god said he would do because when you can find what god said he will do i assure you he will do it genesis 21 and verse 1 please give it to us verse 1 and 2 genesis 21 read with me please one to read as he has uh-huh and the lord did unto sarah when he speaks he does except he has not said it so you must find his promises sarah conceived and bare abraham a son in her old age at the set time which the lord had spoken promises that's the first thing we search for in scripture every time you open your bible your eyes must look for promises lord what have you said concerning my life what have you said concerning my destiny it is only what he has said that comes to pass integrity is the ability to say and do if god has not said why should he do so when you find what he has said then because he's a god of integrity the bible says god is not a man that he should lie that means men lie men don't lie because they are bad they lie because they are men hallelujah god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent you can trust what he said now listen carefully the second thing that is contained in scripture are principles principles represent the modus operandi of the kingdom how the kingdom operates when you study scripture you find therein principles jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 he says to stand and to ask look at that path that old path stand in the way and ask for the old path he says wherein is the good way and when you have found it walk in it jesus the word also called himself the way there is a revelation of jesus called jesus the way how things are done in the kingdom there is a way God lifts people. There is a way God restores. There is a way God anoints. There is a way God increases. There is a way God def defends people. You have to understand the ways of God. Before he showed Moses his glory, the first thing he showed Moses were his ways. So promises, principles. The third thing we find in scripture are prophecies revelations about the future to be able to give you hope and to give you comfort we find in scripture prophecies so that we know that we are overcomers because of the prophecies that we have seen every time you open your bible you are searching for these three things promises principles prophecies if your life is built upon the integrity of it is written the dust will come and go every other thing will come and go but because this house is built on a rock it will stand and it will remain the same thing that happened to the house on the sand happened to the house on the rock it was not the superstructure it was the foundation jesus said this is how i will build my church i will build my church with a formula and if this formula is is honored the gates of hell will not prevail 
against her. Build your life on scripture. Build your life on it is written and you have nothing to fear. The uncertainties that plague our world, the uncertainties that plague ministries, plague regions are enough to make us fear. But the word of God can give us confidence because we know that it is written. Prophecy already told us the end of it. We know who has won. Ah. There are times that you are watching a movie and someone who has watched it before is sitting with you. He cannot have your anxiety. They kill the actor and you are, frust you are frustrated. I've wasted one hour. I thought this man would win and the person says, you just keep watching. And you are wondering, what, where is your confidence coming from? The confidence is coming from the fact that he's watched it before. He watched it right to the point that he saw the end. And I can tell you, this right here already told me the end of my life. Yeah. He will not suffer my food to be carry your presence who am i your mind is so full of me i have found the end of my destiny here that i know the thoughts that i think towards you say at the lord that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and there is a difference between having a future and having an end. You can have a future, but maybe not have an end. Your today was a future to last week. Future is relative. End is fixed. I am secured in both. I have a future and I have an end. The final element, and then we begin to pray, is the messy seat that overlays it. There is something called the messy seat. Exodus chapter 25. When you read 17 to 22, just write it for reference. The messy seat truly means the mercy of God. It's as simple, as clear, as honest as that. What is the mercy of God? The mercy of God is a factor that is, is an invention from his intelligence to be able to deal with man in spite of the vacillations of man. The mercy of God was an invention that was custom made for man. God builds the idea of mercy so that in spite of the frailties of man, there is still a guarantee that he can end. This is the reason why mercy is not an attribute of God that angels and other beings experience. That's why Satan cannot be forgiven because mercy is not within his jurisdiction. And to tell you how determined God is for us to be partakers of his mercy, he tied his mercy with time so that every 24 hours as time resets his mercy also resets it's in your bible he says his mercies are new every morning hallelujah the mercy of god is not a license for licentiousness but it's an advantage the mercy of god gives me guarantee that in spite of my frailties I will still be able to birth the purposes of God. The mercy of God is a covenant that we had with David. As a result of the desire of David to build him a house, he came and he entered a covenant of mercy with David. He says, no matter what you do, David, I have covenanted with you. Saul did not have his mercy. That's why he lost his throne. Saul was more well behaved than David. Oh yes, read your Bible. Saul was by far more well behaved than David. But the mercies of David, 
You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. All healing. All deliverances, all restorations stem from that department of his mercy. It is on the strength of God's mercy that we can guarantee that someone who has been oppressed, that a family that legally gave themselves to the devil as lawful captives, when it has to do with victory over captivity, is not power you need, it's the mercy of God. There are spirits you don't just bind and cast. There are rules of engagement. There is a kind of captivity called lawful captivity. It is this kind that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. For instance, the legal access that Satan had over us by reason of the fall of Adam could not be casted away. No. God did not use power to save man. It was the blood and his death. His power was demonstrated in that mercy. Are we together now? So tonight, I have two assignments in this place. I have just completed one. To challenge you that you can become a mobile Gather the elements that they gathered. Obey what they obeyed. That glory will rest upon you the same way it rested upon them. An individual can be a carrier of that presence. You can take that presence everywhere. Anybody who drags you who is a Philistine will soon know what he carried. You don't have to tell people I'm dangerous. Let the devil try you. And what happened to the Philistines? When they took the ark, they stole it. The ark that was not talking was bringing havoc in the camp of the enemy. But when the same ark was taken to the house of Obed Edom, in 90 days, 90 days, that means if you are employed, in three months of your being in that office there are things that should begin to happen as a testament that the ark has arrived like i was teaching you yesterday please this is not some pentecostal motivation believe me it is true you can be a living breathing career of this ark that way when people are tired of trouble they invite you to their house who do we invite to just sit down for five minutes and you just sit down in their house and they say just to say God bless you and you stand up and they start rejoicing because right there the five minutes visitation it was not just a man that came the man is the wood the earthen vessel but there is the excellency of what has come upon it When you stretch your hands to heal the sick it is not the mortal hands of a man no 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 just help those under the anointing when you stretch your hands to deliver the demons are not seeing hands you are the one who is seeing a hand the demons are seeing the same act that same act Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it rain. 
that weigh in us let the weight of your glory fall. please listen one day I was in the place of prayer and I was caught up in the realm of the spirit and I began to hear the song of angels and this was the song that I heard let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth 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 